What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to another Ramble, man. I, I've been trying to make Sundays for the Ramble. Some people wake up and start thinking about their favorite football team. Some people wake up looking for a, a Kenny for real Ramble, and I appreciate you. There's a lot of things I want to get to in today's video. If you're new around here, a Ramble is just me, a microphone, and a camera. We can talk for five minutes. We can talk for an hour. Just all things that's on my mind. It starts off in the NBA. It probably won't end that way. That's what the Ramble is. And today, I got topics like the Phoenix Suns, the Toronto Raptors, the Golden State Warriors. It's just... A, a lot of different stuff. It's the ramble. Um, so before we get into it, let me tell you about our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Shopify. A lot of y'all know that I started a business named Enjoy Basketball a little while ago, and I had literally no experience on starting and growing a brand, at least until we found out about Shopify. They helped us start, manage, and grow our business. Shopify powers more entrepreneurs than anyone else in the world. We're talking millions and millions of businesses across 175 different countries. Through Shopify, Enjoy Basketball did a few apparel drops, and we also dropped this mini basketball hoop. Link is in the description. And while any drop is stressful, I had a lot less stress knowing that Shopify was the platform we were using to drop that mini hoop. The mini hoop just went live like six hours ago, and I've had my laptop open to our Shopify shop since then, because I can see every single order that comes in live, and I can see where you're ordering from is crazy. Shopify even helped me put together my first pop-up shop for Enjoy Basketball. Hit the link in the description to go to shopify.com slash KOT for Q. And shout out to Shopify again for sponsoring another video. You know what's crazy? I had a sponsor yesterday's video, right? And uh, instead of people talking about the contents of the video, all of the comments are like, dang, Kenny sponsored by them. Dang, Kenny Hollywood. I'm not Hollywood. I'm not big time. They hit the DMs. I said, yes, simple. You know what I'm saying? Um, and same thing with the sponsor for today's video. So shout out to everybody that that sits through those. So if you don't appreciate you, you appreciate you too because your click means the same to me. Um, let's talk about the Phoenix Suns to start off with. It's the hot topic right now because Devin Booker today against the Pelicans who have become a rivalry. This is a rivalry, a modern day rivalry. We don't have a lot of those. You know, we have rivalries in the NBA that are ingrained in the jersey: Lakers, Celtics, Bulls, Knicks. I don't, I don't. The Bulls don't really have a rival. I don't know. I mean, you could say the Bulls, Knicks, but in reality, I don't know if Knicks fans are looking at the Bulls like I want to see them fail, and I don't think. Think Bulls fans are looking at the Knicks like I want to see them fail. That's what a rivalry is to me, where the opposing team hates the guts of the other team. Where even if you're not even associated with each other, you want to see them fail. Bears Packers, Bears Packers, bro. I could I could go on about stories where my family is hate watching Aaron Rodgers in them. You know what I'm saying? Because they're that's that's the way it works. So Lakers Celtics have that. And this is becoming a modern little sum sum. And it's not engraved in the uniform because this basically started last season in the playoffs. So unfortunately for us, we won't see this again unless they see each other in the playoffs again. Because, well, uh, th they played three out of their last whatever games in the last two weeks. Th they have no more regular season games against each other, which is crazy. It's ridiculous. Devin Booker today put up 58 points on 60% from the fields, 50% from three. But he also missed five free throws to make it 66%. And now listen, Devin Booker's an 85 to 90% free throw shooter. I don't know. I'm not Googling it. But I know he's a really good free throw shooter. And 66% is probably haunting him. Because if he just hits two more free throws, he get that big old round number. And I don't care what you say. The philosophy speaks for itself. I remember a, a professor talking about this before. I remember what class it was in. Talking about the round number and why humans are attached to it. We're like, of course you want to score 20 points instead of 19 because it's more. But it just looks prettier. Having that zero or having a five looks prettier, and we want that. So 58 points is two less than 60, but it ain't as impressive as getting 60. You know what I'm saying? Um, so if he just miss, hit a couple more free throws, then boom, he get a 60 piece of yada yada. I think we're gonna look back on this game. It is the regular season, so maybe not, but like highlights of this game gonna be played throughout the course of Devin Booker's career. Because not only did he drop 58 points on 60% shooting. But he scored 26 or 24 straight points for the Phoenix Suns on a comeback where they were down double digits. It's the regular season, so whatever. But but this game is incredible. Now, again, I'm watching this as a as a guy that's just enjoying the game of basketball. I'm not rooting for the Pales. I'm not rooting for the Suns. I'm just watching, right? And I make a tweet when Devin Booker hit a shot that put him at like 44 points or something. And I think I tweet like, oh my God, Devin Booker, or something crazy like that. And the, we're going to get into this first topic about the Phoenix Suns, but I'm actually surprised at how unliked they are on NBA Twitter and NBA media. I, I mean, I can understand it partially, right? Because Chris Paul is basically an unlikable player unless you're me. And quickly explaining this, because because anytime Chris Paul's name is in news negatively for on or off the court stuff, if you know, you know, 
I'm the first person that get mentioned. My mentions get flooded. So, for example, the other day, um, when they were going against the Pelicans in one of those games, he tried to throw a little, little, little bump at Jose Alvarado. Like, Kenny, how can you support this dude? How can you become a fan of this dude? Here's my quick one-minute explanation of my fandom with Chris Paul. And I'm looking at the time right now. When I was younger, I thought I was going to play, going to the league. I knew my dad was short. My dad is like 5'10", 5, 5'11". 5, my mom is like 5'2". I knew I wasn't going to get 6'4", 6'5". So as a young dude that's, let's say, 10 years old, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how the hell can I make it to the league? I saw a guy named Chris Paul who was like 6'1", and he was controlling the game as if he was LeBron James. And, and like he was controlling the pace. He was controlling the game offensively, defensively, and, and legitimately younger me thought there was a world that this man Chris Paul could see the future and because of that I fell in love with his game because I thought I could be the next Chris Paul obviously I was mistaken but if you you grow up watching a player and watch them be successful it still goes even to this day you know so yeah he's he has a plethora of dirty plays in his career he's a he's a flopper and this season he hasn't looked as spry as some of the other ones but i'm still a chris paul fan but people also mistake that for me being a, a fake Suns fan it's th those two are not together you know what i'm saying so if they lose this game i'm not like dang man chris paul lost tonight that's not the way it works i want to see chris paul be successful I've come come to the realization this season, as long as he here is not going to get a ring. I think, yeah, uh, last, not last season, two years ago when they were in the finals with the closest he'll ever get. And that's, I guess that's fine. Um, but Chris Paul, unlikable player. Devin Booker's a trash talker, which is not nothing that's abnormal. A lot of people in the league talk trash. But when it comes back to bite you on a national stage like it did against the, the Dallas Mavericks, so it might turn some people off. Like him flopping and saying, I gave them a Luka special to the crowd. And then one day, game later, Luka Doncic is looking at him, you know, the infamous, you know what I'm saying. Um, and then they lose by 150,000 points in that game. Then you got the workout videos that rub people the wrong way. They might be the most unlikable team in the NBA according to like NBA consistency. Again, I don't really care. I'm 26 years old, my boy. I don't really look at somebody working out after winning and be like, oh, that's kind of douchebaggy. It doesn't matter to me. I'm here to watch basketball and enjoy basketball. So um, I don't see them as unlikable, but I can understand why people would. But I also see like when Mikael Bridges and DeAndre Aiden is dancing with the fans to, to uh, Young Boys Nevada. That stuff. Anyway, I make a tweet. Um, and the comments are crazy. I, I just I do want to say it's okay to have players or teams that you just like. I'm not here to tell you how to look, but a game like tonight for Devin Booker should be admired. Even if you hate Devin Booker, you can say, "Hey, I don't mess with bro, but that brother can ball." In my Stephen A. Smith voice, that brother can ball because tonight was ridiculous because they had no business coming back. They were down by double digits, and Devin Booker scored 24 straight points to win. And you know who's an unsung hero on this one? That boy Josh Kogi got four offensive rebounds late down the stretch, also four fouls, but whatever. This team, I've mentioned it before, and people keep asking me to dive deeper into why I don't think they're a contender, and it—it's not even nothing that's too too crazy. I don't think they're talented enough. Simple. I do not trust anybody on this team in a seven-game series anymore other than, than Devin Booker and Chris Paul occasionally. You're not a contender if I say that about you. You know? We don't know a version of AD you're going to get because, you know, we get to the Pelican series. Aiden was one of the main reasons they won this series. It was close. Obviously, I think they went to six, right? DeAndre Aiden showed why he was the former number one overall pick. Look past the fact that Luka was in that draft. He showed why he was the number one pick in that series and then we get to some of the later series you question whether or not he's on the floor so they paid him all his money so be it Mikel Bridges has been better this season he was a 50 40 90 candidate and then he shot two for 24 the other <laughs> he shot two for 24 and at one point he was one and 18 um so that 50 40 90 stuff is dead but they just don't have enough talent currently constructed and at the end of the day that's what it boils down to could they get there with some traits sure maybe but right now you have Devin Booker in the prime of his time and you have to figure out how can we continue to be to be contenders while he's playing like this and right now you haven't built that roster but it's funny how fast it flipped four years ago four years ago this team had had no direction and it's three years later and Suns fans are asking for major major change so they had two and a half years because right now this has been a successful season as you know not maybe not to the standards they want because they want to win a championship but you think about what was happening before the chris paul trade before the bubble before mikhail bridges broke out and compare it to now this should be light years better for fans but if you ask the fans of the phoenix suns which season that you enjoy more they might not even say this year because they're good but not good enough and being good and not good enough for three straight seasons 
it takes a toll and, and you're seeing that across the league and the Suns have been somewhat hesitant to do anything major over the last couple seasons after the Chris Paul trade they saw they had a recipe that could be successful we made it to the finals and then we were the number one seed that won 65 they went 65 games last year holy hell and it's like okay we know that that team's still in there so why should we move and do some other stuff but I think you should because I don't want to use the words wide open. The West is wide open, but the West is wide the hell open. Now you ask Kenny, what does that look like for the Phoenix Suns? What pieces are they missing to potentially do it? I believe if you're going to tell me that Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden, and Mikel Bridges is my core, and I'm assuming that's the case, even though it's a bit weird this offseason with DeAndre Aiden and the contract not want to give him to him, and should we give it to him, boom, boom, boom. I don't think he's going to finish out the contract as a Phoenix Sun, but what do I know? But if let's say you're convincing yourself that that is your core. You got Devin Burke, who's an all-NBA player. You have Mikel Bridges, who's an all-defensive player. And you got Aiden. He's he's side, you know? If you're convincing yourself that that's your core, because Chris, I'm, the only reason I'm not adding Chris Paul because he's aging, he's, he's not going to be there for three seasons. He's, it's, I don't... So if you're convincing me that that's my core, I think that core is good enough to be a competent playoff team every year. That's not what you want. That's not the ceiling you want, but I feel confident in saying that. So if we feel confident that the picks that we are going to have are 20 through 30 every season, why don't we try to do some things that some of the other teams around the league have done? Now, all of them have not worked out. The Atlanta Hawks are struggling. They gave up three first round picks to get DeJounte, but DeJounte is currently having an ankle sprain and Clint Capella's out and, and John Collins is out and Buck Donovan's just came back. So they've been ridiculously unhealthy and unlucky right now. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves weren't good with Carnton Towns and they're not good without Carnton Towns. So I guess those are the arguments against doing something like that. Hear me out. I think what you have as your core is maybe more secure than what those other teams have. And I, I will take back pushback on that because you had Trey Young. That's pretty much it, actually. John Collins is up in the trade. There's nobody else on that team for the Atlanta Hawks pre DeJounte Murray trade that felt like they were 100% going to be there for the next three seasons. The Minnesota Timberwolves had Cat and they had Anthony Edwards, which is dope. I mean, those two dudes are, are ballers. But like the Suns, again, have an all NBA player and an all defensive player just sitting there. So maybe you could feel like that core alone, no matter what, we're going to be good enough. So let's start packaging some of these, some of these picks. Let's let's start figuring out how we can legitimately put around put talent around book and bridges and all of these to, to build a team that can win come playoff time. And I don't have the answer. I don't think anybody have the answer to mid-February where we really figure out what teams are selling. Um, but this the Suns are just not that right now. They're still a good watch, in my opinion. I think because of Devin Booker alone, they're still a good watch, but right now they're not on the echelon, the, the top tier where I can feel like that they can win the Western Conference right now. Let's talk about the um the Toronto Raptors. Because they have been my most disappointing team this season, right? Let me look at the standings, boom, boom, boom. Uh, other than the Bulls, obviously, they have been my most disappointing team this season by far. If you go back and watch my video about my Eastern Conference standings, I, I, was, I was very, very high on the Toronto Raptors and their ability to be like a top four. I think I put them at the five seed. And of course, anything can really happen. This team is a team that could go on a five-game win streak just like that because they're still a talented team. But right now, they sit at 13 and 16 on a four-game losing streak. And it ain't looked, it ain't looked pretty. I can't, I can't like a lot of fans be like, oh, it's because they're injured because every single team is injured. Do you want me, do you want me to go down the list? Okay. Robert Williams hasn't just played for his first game of the season. Chris Middleton was out for a bunch of time. Have the Cavs been, oh no, Darius Garland missed the beginning of the season because he got hit in the face. Um, Kyrie Irving got suspended. Ben Simmons been in and out of injury and in and out with injury. Tyrese Maxey and James Harden was out. Come on, bro. I could go on and on and on. Every single team. Desmond Bain has missed like a month of basketball. The, the Pelicans are without Brandon Ingram for the next couple weeks. I go on and on. Every single team is injury riddled. So I can't use that as an excuse for the Toronto Raptors for being unsuccessful. The real thing is they can't shoot and they can't score in the half court. And I, 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 I knew, you know. It's not like they were a supreme half-court team last season. They weren't very good last season either. But I thought that the defense and the turnover making and the running gun was going to be enough for them to win a bunch of games. And so far through the first two months or so, I've been wrong. A lot of the conversation around the Toronto Raptors right now is about Scotty Barnes and the sophomore slump or the sophomore wall. He's, he's been better compared to the first month or so. This is why I don't overreact to rookies and or sophomores and even like year three players when they start off slow because it is a long season. It is an 82 game season. You know what I'm saying? This this is I didn't expect Scotty Barnes to come out and be a superstar. Maybe you did. I, I didn't. 
I always explain to people when they ask me about their young, talented player not being great, especially in a year number two or year number three, is progression is only linear in 2K. That's the only place. And he goes up by three overalls in year two, four overalls in year three. That is the only place progression is linear. Every other person around the league, it's a case by case basis. Scotty Barnes, I'm using him as a hypothetical right now, could look exactly the same in his sophomore year to his freshman year. And you would think, okay, maybe he's not going to be that. And in year number three, something clicks. I like the interviews that I've been getting or hearing from Thaddeus Young, from uh, Chris Boucher, and, and more recently, Fred Van Vliet about Scotty Barnes, where Freddie said, we can do everything we want to help him, but it's his decision to determine whether or not he's going to blossom into a butterfly. And in this case, of course, a butterfly is a superstar in the NBA. And it's it's it's, it's the right thing to say. I mean, from everything I've, I've heard about Scotty Barnes, he's a hard worker. Obviously, people are like, oh, he got to stop the streaming. He got to stop gaming. That has nothing to do with his work ethic on the court. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if, when he's in the gym, he's working hard and he's in the gym all the time. So I, as somebody that's not a part of the organization, that's not rooted for the team, I'm not really worried about Scotty Barnes. Again, he's already looked way better in the last month. I think the first month he was uh, scoring like 13 points per game on some mid efficiency. Now he's averaging like 18 points per game this month on some decent efficiency. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, this, the numbers don't tell the full story, but it tells par part of the story. You know what also tells the story? Fred Van Vliet. Freeman Vliet has not been good. I was giving the Toronto Raptors the benefit of the doubt on a few different things. Pascal Siakam is a absolute workhorse. Where I say progression is not linear, it's a case-by-case -case basis. For Pascal Siakam in his career, it has been goddamn... Oh, I can't say it has been linear because the Tampa season was a dip. It's been near linear where every single season, other than Tampa, everybody's bad in Tampa, other than Tampa, he's been better and better and better. And he said he wanted to be top five or top three, whatever the hell it was. And I didn't think he was going to get to top five, top three. But I knew for sure he was going to take a jump, and he's done that. I thought that what happened to Fred Van Vliet on the second half of the season was with uh, lingering inj injuries and whatever, the full off season of work and, and rest, he going to be back to playing at a near all-star caliber level because he was an all-star last season. I was wrong on that. I was right about Pascal. I was wrong on that, right about Pascal. They just... <sighs> It's a, it's a tough team to watch sometimes because of how bad they can be in the, in the half court. And I respect their commitment to development while also trying to compete. Christian Coloco is not ready to be starting NBA games. From, from my own vision, he is not ready, ready to be starting NBA games. And you, you can tell that. And, I mean, they're basically doing it because they use the draft pick on him. And he's he's projects to be really good. You know, he's a smart defensive player. He's just got a don't got great hands. He don't really score like that. And that's fine. Um, but because they basically have nothing else at the center position, I would rather develop my guy Christian Coloco to give Kim Burch 30 minutes a game. So let's do that. And I honestly do believe that this, this trade deadline is about to be really something for the Toronto Raptors. I don't know exactly what that means. Everybody keeps talking about Fred Van Vliet being extension eligible and him not taking an extension or them not offering him extension. What could that possibly mean? Could that mean that they're willing to trade him at the deadline? Does that mean that they just let him walk in free agency? I don't know. Old John Anobi's name has been a trade bus for years, and I've never really understood it unless it was literally OG going into the, the office saying, I want out. I don't know if I'm Masai. Masai why the hell would I trade OG? He's one of the best defensive players in basketball, and the offensive game is coming along beside that. Why would I trade him? unless he tells me that he wants out gary trent jr feels like a guy that will be traded on last year for his deal i mean he's like one of the few shooters on the roster but even his shooting is wishy-washy i i still believe that they can do some of the stuff i predicted them to but right now it's been rough it's been really rough i mean they blew the game to the uh to the nets the other day where Kyrie Irving had the big shot and yuda watanabe also had a big shot i'm just ugh. the last thing i want to talk about it's something I heard on the No Dunks podcast. Shout out to the guys, man. They're, they they formerly the starters. If you watch the starters back in the day, because one thing I've noticed is that anytime I talk about the got them, people are like, oh my god, I didn't know they were still doing work. Yes, they still work. And there's No Dunks here on YouTube. Not an ad for them, but I re I listen to their show every single day that they do it, and they're really the guys. And they were doing a segment where um where Trey Kirby was trying to figure out what fan bases are currently happy. And I thought it was a really, really cool thought experiment. So let's do it ourselves. My own personal opinion, all 30 teams, do I think their team fans are happy? Right now, the Boston Celtics, even though they're 6-4 and four in their last 10 and they lost to Orlando Magic and Gorgas Orlando to, again today with no Jason Tatum, we'll see what that looks like. Um, their fan base should be ecstatic. 
They're still the best record in basketball. Not by a ton right now, but they're still the best record in basketball. And even though over the last couple weeks, the offense hasn't been as good as we saw. I, mean, I didn't expect them to be the best offense of all time for the entire season, but it's been really mid over the last couple weeks. Nonetheless, the fan base should be extremely happy right now. The Bucks fans should always be happy. You have Giannis, and when you have Giannis, you lose in games is rare. The Cavaliers fans, happy. Brooklyn Nets fans, happy. 76ers fans, I would I would probably say they're happy. Maybe I should be doing like on a scale of 1 through 10. I'm already beat. I'm going to say happy. Knicks fans, happy. Everything out to that, I don't know. Because like even though the Miami Heat are on a four-game win streak, finally above 500 for the first time in a long time, I, I still believe that their fan base is probably not happy. Mostly because you built the team to compete for a championship and you're really not in that, that same thing right now. So even though they're currently streaking, you let me know if I'm wrong if you're, you're supporting these teams. You let me know. I don't think Heat fans are happy right now. Pacers fans, I think they're happy. They're a 500 team when nobody had expectations. And even if they continue to be 500 or less than 500, I think that the Pacers fans will be happy because they have Ben and they have Reese and both those players project to be really good. Atlanta Hawks fans, I do not believe they're happy. I think they're really upset with the fact that they have the injury bug and the fact that the Trey Young led thing has had so many stories over the last couple of seasons that I can't keep track of it. Now, Trey Young did have one of his best games of the season the other night. So maybe right now you're slightly happy, but I think overall, based on the season, being 500 based on what you gave up is not something that was in the books. You know what I'm saying? Raptors fans, unhappy. Bulls fans might be the fucking maddest fans in the world at the moment. I'm me. I'm mad. I'm Bulls fan. Um... I said on my podcast today that like obviously a long time ago I detached my mental health with the Bulls because for the entirety of my life we haven't been very good so if I let my mental health be you know on the bad side of a Bulls loser streak I will never be happy so I stopped that but I said on our podcast that like I'm okay with the Bulls losing all these games obviously I'm rooting for my Bulls every single night but when they lose I'm not like damn because it's gonna put the front office in a position to make a decision at the end of the day, I think that's all Bulls fans want to know. What are y'all thinking? What are y'all thinking? Are y'all thinking that maybe we become sellers? Are you thinking that you're going to try to retool? Are you thinking you're going to buy? Like, we just want to know where your head is at. Because every single individual Bulls fans has a different mindset. Some of us want to hit the reset and rebuild. Some of us want to retool around DeMar and Zach. And some of us are like, go trade that Portland pick because we want more. Um, Wizards fans are not happy. Um, they they should be though, because you're losing games and you own your own first round pick this season. Be happy, be happy. Um, Orlando Magic fans are ecstatic right now because after being the worst team in basketball, they're currently in five game losing streak and that five game I mean winning streak, five game winning streak. But we know it's not super sustainable, so eventually you'll be back to being bad. I mean that's the idea. Um, Pistons fans are in a weird spot because their franchise player Kate Cunningham just went down with an injury that'll hold them out for the rest of the season. Um, I'm gonna say they're happy. Jalen Duran has been a revelation. Shout out to him. He broke a record for like youngest player to get double digit rebounds and X amount of games. Shout out to him for, for that. Um, Isaiah Stewart has become a really plus three point shooter out of nowhere. And Killian is showcase that he can hoop. So I would say they happy, especially because you're in a Vic sweepstakes. And the Charlotte Hornets, I'm going to say this is probably the happiest you've been in a long time. It will, you should be because you're bad. And that means you're going to get a top pick. Now, what you do with that top pick, I don't know. You're the Hornets. I don't know. You ain't got a crazy great track record there. The Memphis Grizzly fans are ecstatic, even though John Moran got ejected today for talking to the to the to the fans. Um, the the Pelicans are super are are good. They're low key biting their nails right now because they're on a three game losing streak after they were at the top of the conference and looking amazing. The last three games they have not losing two to Utah and then one tonight after blowing a double digit lead. So I would say they're happy but hesitant. Um, the Denver Nuggets hard to tell. I would say happy, sure. Suns, not happy because, again, they're the four seed, two-game winning streak, but I think majority of Suns fans realize that there's a ceiling here. Sacramento Kings fans are ecstatic. Demonte Sabonis is playing out of his goddamn mind, and they've been staying afloat even though De'Aaron Fox was playing through an injury where he, like, the first month of the season for De'Aaron Fox, he was unstoppable. He was looking like the, the top three-point guard in basketball strictly based on that first month. And then he had a little like knickknack injury and you could tell that he was laboring and he had like a five game stretch where he was not very good. And then eventually they convinced him or he convinced them to like, let me rest for a couple games. And since he come back, he's been playing better and the Kings are back to doing some crazy stuff. 
I don't know if they end up getting two all-stars, uh, especially like I mentioned with the De'Aaron Fox down part, even though it was like five or so games. Who knows? But if I'm making an all-star battle right now, so bonus is a guaranteed lock, not so much De'Aaron. But they could have two. Shout out to Sabonis. Trailblazer fans, I think they're still pretty good because they've been able to win, win games now that Dame is back and Dame is looking like the best version of him. Um, Clippers fans are feeling damn good right now because Kawhi Leonard gave them a 29 today and they had a 20 piece, 25 piece the night before. Yeah, even though they still can't keep everybody on the court at the same time and be completely healthy, they should be happy with what's going on. Jazz fans, still pretty good. Mavericks fans, not so much. 5-5, five five, they're the def definition of like, eh. They got a superstar caliber player, and they're still the definition of eh, 15 and 15, 5 and 5 in their last 10. Can't win on the road. They almost won today with Kemba Walker looking great, so I'm happy for Kemba. I don't think Dallas Mavericks fans are happy. I don't think Timberwolves fans are happy because they did all of that, and then Carlton Towns went out, and they can't win games. Uh, Warriors fans might be super sad. They're, they're in the conversation for saddest uh, fan base in basketball. Lakers are so hard to tell, bro. The fan base is so good that I got to stop letting a few bad apples like like really mess with my mind when it comes to the Lakers. For example, the other night, here's a, here's a story time. I'm watching. I'm minding my business. I ain't made no tweets on the day. I ain't talked about nothing. Minding my business. Watching Lakers versus Celtics. The Lakers come back on a 30 to something run. And there's a dude in the mentions. And you might be watching this video. Shout out to you. Appreciate you for watching. Where he say, yeah, Kenny. Keep that same energy come playoff time. What the f did I do? So, you know, I don't respond to a lot of tweets. So I ask him, what are you talking about? He said, you made a contenders video and you ain't even mention the Lakers. Bro, the Lakers are not contenders as currently constructed. That entire video, I kept saying it's currently constructed. It's currently constructed. I can't predict what trade the Lakers could do or what trade the whatever team could do. But based on their roster and their 25 games of basketball, they're not a contender. They're just not. Right? So I said, I say that. Currently constructed, the Lakers are not a contender. And he said, all right, bro. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. And the Lakers proceed to have the big ass comeback and blow the game. And I was tempted to tweet at bro. But that's too petty of me. It's too petty. I didn't do it. I didn't stick that low. They're not contenders. They're just not. That's fine. That's fine. They're not contenders. Everybody can't be contenders. They're not, they're not one of them. But I can't tell you if their fans are. I mean, well, I'm gonna go out and let me say they're not happy. They're a sub 500 team. No way. No way you have LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook, and you're happy with the production right now. Now, you might be happy that they're looking better now than they did the start of the season, but overall, on the temperature check of this season, not happy. OKC fans, happy. Spurs fans, probably happy. Rockets fans, happy. Because Wimby. Because <laughs> Wimby. Um, I think that's enough rambling about basketball. I don't know if I made any points worth talking about whatsoever. One thing that's been going on in the Kenny Beecham life, though, if you care, you can click off if you only care about basketball. I, out of nowhere, um, started to want to read manga. There's a store like an hour away. It's a it's a Japanese store or market. But inside the market, it's like the biggest the biggest manga um, seller in Illinois. I'm like, I'm taking that drive. I took the drive and I felt like a kid in the candy shop. And I didn't even know what I was looking for. So I look for I look for familiar names like. Juju Kaiser. Like, I'm, I'm an anime watcher for y'all that don't know. I watch anime. But I was like, some people always say that the manga is better than the anime. So let me go out there and go read some anime, right? So I pick up um, I pick up this thing called, oh, Sakamoto Days. I read the first three editions of Sakamoto Days. I'm hooked on manga. I have been back to the bookstore like six times. I'm exaggerating. A lot. And I, I just fig uh, finished um, I just finished the fourth volume of Chainsaw Man. And, like, I'm reading stuff about shows I've watched. You know what I'm saying? Because the manga is cool. It's enjoyable. So, like, uh, you can't really tell. Th these are books. These are manga. This is a set of a show, I mean, a, a manga that somebody recommended. I'm saying that to say my basement is about to become a goddamn library. Because I'm putting this on the ground. I have no place to put it. Um, so I'm taking all, and I mean all manga recommendations. Don't, don't, I don't care about the genre at this point. I'm a big shonen guy. Fight. Throw me boxing. I found some stuff that's not shown it. I'm like, yeah, I like this. Um, so I'm always open. You know, I know, I know the main ones. You know what I'm saying? Don't say Berserk. I got, I got the first seven editions of Berserk over there. I ain't started it, but I got it. I already read Vinland Saga. I already read Vinland Saga. I'm reading Chainsaw Man, so so Sakamoto Days. What else is over there? Slam Dunk. I only can find the first two editions of Slam Dunk. They're like on back order or whatever. 
Kaiju number eight is another one. And they just dropped a trailer for Kaiju number eight. Oh, snap. It's getting an adaptation. Um, so hit me up on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Thank you.